the bank reconciliation process. So at the end of every month, the reasons for the differences between the balance of the bank account and the balance of the bank statement must be sought and entries must be made to rectify it or to explain the reason for the differences. So if the bank statement shows any amounts with which the bank has already increased or decreased the account but which the business only sees when receiving the bank statement. The entries for these increases or decreases can merely be made in the bank account or cash journals of the business so that the transaction are reflected in the financial records of both parties. So should it appear from the bank statement that the business has made a wrong entry or an error in one of the cash journals, for example, uh, an amount was recorded as more or less than the actual amount. The error can be corrected by making a counter entry in the bank account or in one of the cash journals. So basically what it says is, every month we will take our books and we will take the bank's books. Our books consist of CPJ and CRJ and the bank's books consist of bank statements. We will then literally go and tick off information that is in both places. If for some reason we made a tick in terms of the bank's records, but we were unable to make a tick in our records, in other words, our records has a cross. It's not in our records, but it is present in the bank's records. It's on the bank statement. Examples of this is, for instance, bank charges. So the bank knows about the bank charges, but we only found out once the bank statement came to, to the shop. Then all that we do is we take the information on bank statement and we add it to our records. So we add it in terms of either CRJ or CPJ, depending on if it increased or decreased the bank statement. So we take the information, add it to our books, job done. If there, for instance, were an error in our books, again, we add it, CRJ, CPJ, to correct the error, and job done. Because the problem lies in our books, it's very easy to correct because we are in charge of our own books. So from the above, it should be clear that the business can, for these increases or decreases or the rectifying of errors, immediately make entries in their records in order to calculate the correct balance of our bank account. Because of the fact, however, that the bank only issues a bank statement at the end of every month, it will not be possible to check any corrections or additions that should have been made by the bank immediately and therefore another process must be followed. So the business will have to record transactions that have already been entered into their records and which have already increased or decreased the balance of the bank account but which have not yet been entered on the bank statement or errors that might have occurred on the bank statement in such a way that it can be checked when they receive the bank statement from the bank at the end of next month. So the business will for the purpose compile a statement which we call the bank reconciliation statement. So basically the bank reconciliation statement is a statement where we keep the information that is not yet on bank statement to check up on that for future or in the next month. So the bank reconciliation statement consists of all deposits, checks, which have already been recorded as an increase or a decrease in their bank balance by the business, but which have not yet been recorded by the bank, as well as any errors that the bank might have made. So the bank reconciliation statement must be compared with the bank statement received at the end of the next month in order to check if the necessary entries 
for the increase and decrease which has not been depicted on the last bank's statement have been done as well as if the errors that the bank made on the last bank statement have been corrected. So in short, after we've now compared our books to that of the bank, it might be that our books has information that the bank's books does not. In a case where this happens, we take the information from our books and add it. But we are not in charge of the bank's books, so we cannot add it to the actual bank's books. We can, however, add it to the bank reconciliation statement, BRS, bank reconciliation statement. Now, the bank reconciliation statement is just a piece of paper that we draw up for ourselves with the information that's missing in the bank statement. And it serves as a reminder for ourselves that we must check next month whether those omissions or errors have been corrected in the next month. So we can basically just keep track of the bank's entries on a bank reconciliation statement. So what should be clear now is that when there's something missing in our books, we add it to our books. If there's something missing in the bank's books, we add it to the bank reconciliation statement. A third scenario can also occur. Third scenario says it's missing in our books as well as it's missing in the bank's books. So if it's missing in both places, we add it to ours through the CRJ CPJ, depending on which is necessary. And we add it to bank reconciliation statement. As easy as that. Let's go look at a few more specific scenarios. But before we do that, let's just consider the steps to follow. Before we consider the steps to follow, let's just look at a bank reconciliation statement as an example. So the bank reconciliation statement looks as follows. Remember, it's drawn up as a way of recording what needs to happen in the bank's books. So this is then known as a liability, which the credit side is the increasing side, and the debit side is the decreasing side. So we will always write down everything that needs to be updated in terms of the bank's books. So we give the bank statement balance as it is on the bank statement. Then we add any deposits that is outstanding. In other words, we add on the credit side. Then we subtract any checks that is outstanding. Subtracting means it's on the debit side. Then if there's any errors to be corrected, we will list them, them as well, debiting or crediting, depending on if we need to increase or decrease the bank's books. And then as a way of ending off our bank reconciliation statement, we add our own bank account balance but this bank account balance is then referring to as it would be in our bank meaning that if our bank account balance ended as an overdraft balance on the credit side we would put it as a credit balance here as well so exactly as it is in bank account we would bring it over to bank reconciliation statement like that adding up the debit side adding up the credit side which then results should result in the same totals at the bottom. If it's the same total, then it means that we have reconciled our bank account with that of the bank correctly or that there's no omissions anymore. So just to clarify one thing, our bank account balance at the end then refers back to an asset balance, which means that and it increases in the debit side, decreases in the credit side, which is the opposite of the rest of the bank reconciliation statement. So there's four easy steps to keep in mind when you do bank reconciliation. The process are as follows. Step number one, record all the increases or decreases which occur on the bank statement and have not yet been recorded in our books, in other words, in the cash journals of the business by making the necessary entries in the cash receipts or the cash payments journal. 
or you can also alternatively do them directly in the bank account. Examples of an increase can include the following. Interest on current account. Any deposits made directly into the bank account of the business or something like rent income. Examples of decreases include bank statement of bank charges, interest on bank overdraft, any stop or debit orders for something like insurance. After you updated our books, we then take these books to step number three in terms of correcting the balance in the bank account. Also what we can do in our books is we can check for any errors that have been made by the business in the cash journals and we correct these by making a counter entry in our cash journals or alternatively directly on the bank statement of the bank account. Examples of such errors, the amount of checks or deposits was entered too much or too little by the business. So after the journals were completely updated, we post these to our bank account and therefore we calculate the correct balance in bank account after all the entries have been done and all the errors have been recorded. So step number one to step number three is basically to update our records in our books. Then step number four is to compile the bank reconciliation statement. And you must know by now that we compile the bank reconciliation statement as an effort to update the bank's records. So A, we show a debit or credit balance as per bank statement. Then we update their records by adding any outstanding deposits which have already been added or increased in our records, that of the business, but have not yet been added to the bank on the bank statement. Then we decrease or debit all checks which have already been recorded or decreased in our records, that of the business, but which have not yet been presented for payment at the bank. D, we show any corrections for any increases or decreases that the, that the bank have shown wrongly in the bank statement. For example, if the accounts of the business have been credited by deposit or debited by deduction, which related to another business. E, we then show the debit or credit balance as it comes from the bank account. And then lastly, we balance the bank reconciliation statement by adding the debit side and adding the credit side. And then debit side must equal to the credit side. Therefore, we know that we are in balance when bank reconciliation was done. In short, these four steps can be summarized as follows. We update our books by means of the CRJ, CPJ. Updating our books means that we update it with outstanding information or with errors. Then when it's updated, we post this to the bank account and we balance the bank account. We then take this balance of the bank account to the bank reconciliation and we compile the rest of the bank reconciliation. You might ask with what? Remember the bank reconciliation statement consists of all the outstanding information or errors on or in the bank's books, so on the bank statement. And then you ask yourself the question, is the bank account and the bank recon statement in balance? Yes, it is, so we are done with bank reconciliation.